And can you remember how you felt at that time? Because any of us getting that kind of attention at 10 year yeah. old, you're buzzing, aren't you? You know, oh, any, right. even in your local press, local yeah. paper, you're thinking, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. At that stage, I actually enjoyed it. I was like, whoa, I'm, I'm obviously getting quite good or I'm looking quite good. Do you know what I mean? It weren't, it was just the right blend to be fair because it weren't too much. It was just nice. Do you know what I mean? I, I used to, yeah, I used to, I used to enjoy it at that stage. Like people just pulling you up at school and saying, oh, Sonny, this, that, and the other. Yeah. I've seen you gone to Ajax or you're sponsored by Mizuno. But when it gets later on, you know, I'm like insured for a million pound and things like that. And people are trying to break my legs. I'm going through like four shits of shin pads a season, snapping off. Do you know what I mean? It's like dipping. So, so you said that, did it get to the point where the other local lads or whatever were like jealous of it and thought, fuck it, I'm just going to snap him? Yeah, yeah. It got to that stage a little bit further on, as I said, like even dads I'll be on the side of the pitch I talk about it in the book and I'm down the right hand side of the uh, down uh, down on the wing somewhere I can never forget this fella he's like bald head remember them old school umbro jumpers the big then yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah the big massive umbro and he's going to me as I'm in the corner I'm, I don't know I might have been trying to take his son he goes see you you think you're good didn't you he goes you're shit I'm like I was like 10 I'm like whoa <laughs> and he goes you ain't fucking nothing he's giving it to me and I was like all right and I'm trying to do my bits and pieces I thought bloody hell like he's a full grown man like he was and he's it saying your shit. Yeah, it was, I was getting, giving it to me. Like, he was probably saying, your shit, you ain't nothing. He's chatting to me right in here. But did you cash him off? We know the funny thing in that game, I've had it, it's gone back and forth. And my sort of dad, and my old coach, Terry, he sort of cottoned onto it. And he's gone, I'm going to go over there and tell him. And at that point, I was going to take a free kick. And he's walking, as I'm taking the free kick, my old coach, Terry's walking around behind me to go to the other side of the pitch to have a row with him. I said, tell. He goes, I'm going man here to say something to him. I said, tell, don't worry, watch this. And I've hit a corner and scored from the corner. I said, that's shame, Matt. And, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, Terry and just turned around. Yeah, and Terry just looking at me like that. And then I said, yeah, don't worry, tell that shame, Matt. And, um, and that was it. But yeah, but yeah, just things like that. But I had, I had loads. Like my local area, football aside, like trying to get my legs broken, whatever else, people used to just come from other areas, like say Tottenham and Edmonton and everything else, come to Enfield. And I remember being in a cinema once watching, watching a film. I think I was watching that. Like, oh, I can't remember, was it called Running? So it's some old school 90s film or whatever it was. <laughs> with about five of my mates and people come up. Uh, one of my mates has gone out. He's coming back into the cinema. He said to me, son, there's about 20 kids out there, 15 kids out there. They want to weigh you in. They're waiting for you to come out of the cinema. And I froze. Because you're Sonny Park. Yeah, just because, yeah. I, it was nothing to do with football. It's just yeah. obviously they knew me from the era. I, was, I remember I said, I was like, Whoa, I thought, please don't let this film finish. I didn't want to go out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you couldn't wait a bit of a green mile, couldn't you? Yeah. Three hours. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Or the Irishman. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I've, I've walked out and I'm thinking, oh man, I want to walk out. I'm going to get weighed in. Like, whatever. So I've walked out. Lucky enough, they wasn't there at that point. But I walked home and there's a, my park. They've gone to my local park. And as I've gone to get to my house, they've seen me from the, my house is literally there and the park was there, they've seen me, they've all come running down the road. Honestly, they filled pretty much the whole street. They come running down at me, and one of them's cracked me, I've gone into the road, yeah, big split lip, run back into my ass and whatever else, yeah. So I, that was just one, I must've had that maybe five to 10 times, like people coming into my school, I'm doing my classwork and they'll come running into school, load of kids, where's Sunny Bite, where's Sunny Bite? Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> when you say there was nothing to do with football, it must be just bitterness. Is that is that what it was? Yeah, I would jealousy. Yeah, they, they, I don't think it was nothing. It I will be that. I will deal I was this point. still say like twelve. Like so, yeah. my attention. Uh, that so I got a lot of attention from like say between ten. I actually, started from like local from like eight to ten, but from like ten to fourteen, fifteen is when it all went like Ramp McDonald's up. and Coca Cola and Wembley doing the kick-ups in front of 80,000 and everything else. And that's when it was like, this kid's a celebrity kid or whatever, and they didn't like it. So, yeah. That's fucking mind-boggling, by the way. Mm. And did that all start from, do you think it started from the Ajax? Yeah. Caught, that's when, when I, it really Yeah, when I came back, because it was like London tonight, then when I come back from Ajax, there was like, remember Transworld Sport, Football Mondale, all them old school sort of mm. documentary makers, and uh, Blue Peter, they was all there filming it, the whole thing. So when I come back, it was like, boom, and then all the other stuff started coming and it was just like snowballed, I think. How did it go at Ajax? Uh, I was on trial there for just a week, uh, played a game, drew one all, I scored a goal from outside the box, actually. So I'd, I'd done all right, but I've actually mentioned this before. Like, it was quite a 
telling now, looking at it now, at that time, it wasn't, I was still a kid. But like the, the, the week we was there for, as I said, I had like three people making documentaries on me and I'm on trial. And like the, the bit that sort of summed it up a lot, when we had a game, I think on like a Saturday, on the Saturday at the end of the week at like say two o'clock kickoff or something. And I had done media from like five o'clock in the morning for like five or six hours. And they, like my dad was going to me like, they went you up in the middle of the high street when it's dark, when the sun's coming through, they want you dribbling through the street. I'm like, yeah, but dad, I've got a game later at night that day. I want to be like fresh. Like, well, you've got to do what you've got to do. And I was just like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't, really, don't really want to do it, to be honest with you. Yeah. But I was always caught, I always felt a bit middled up where like I was in a position where I want to please my dad. But obviously I just wanted to concentrate on my football at the same time. Do you think you were almost the blueprint of how not to do it? Yeah, definitely. And 100%. things have probably changed since yeah, that point yeah. of, you know, you can't just blow yeah. a young kid to deal with that at that point to the level that it went to at such a young age. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely the blueprint and not to, uh, the way not to do it for sure. Yeah. 